Well, you, it would appear that there's a lot of kind of elements that kind of get to these figures that we heard yesterday, and it's all really quite complicated in that. Now, we do understand that, you know, our socioeconomic um, standards in South Africa aren't the same. Um, could you speak to the inequalities maybe in those results and also the kind of um, resource and access that most of these learners in our country have? Yeah. So, I mean, South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world, if not the most unequal country in the world. Uh, and that's true of our education system as well. We have the most unequal education system, arguably, in the entire world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is largely a legacy of apartheid, but I don't think that the government has done enough to ameliorate these inequalities. So if we look just at the provincial inequalities, so these are very high-level inequalities, you have wealthy provinces like the Western Cape and Gauteng, uh, where the pass rate this year was 85% for Western Cape and 84% for Gauteng. Mm -hmm. But then we have much poorer and rural provinces, the Eastern Cape, Limpopo, um, KZN, where if combined, their pass rate was 50%. So every second student that was writing matric failed in those provinces. Yeah. Uh, now, it's true that you have huge inequalities in terms of resources. Access to books, access to quality teachers is an important one, uh, functioning school governing bodies. Um, but I also think that there's a role to play in, like, we need to be asking how functional are these provinces? I think, arguably, the Eastern Cape, for example, is a failed state. I think that it is so dysfunctional and so captured by special interests uh, and union issues. I mean, uh, just the other day, the minister was commenting on Professor John Volming's report into the sale of teaching posts uh, and exposing the, the sort of rot in the system. And she said that Satu has a quote unquote stranglehold on the education system in these provinces. This is from the Minister of Education. Mm. This is not just someone speculating uh, and saying, you know, drastic things. This is an admission from the top person in education that this is a severe issue that needs to be addressed. And I think until they address it, it doesn't matter how many resources we pump into those provinces, we're not going to see improvements because they're not functional provinces. Mm. So, I mean, we, we understand that there's a really a disparity in terms of access um, to resources and even just province issues. Are you, let's say you're from the Eastern Cape and you are studying incredibly hard, does this mean that you know you have no real chance of making a success of yourself if you come from a province like the Eastern Cape? So, <clears throat> I think the important point to mention is what happens to students that come from poor backgrounds on average and then we have outliers. Sure. We have these students that are succeeding against the odds in all provinces. Eastern Cape included. Uh, you have students that somehow manage to succeed in spite of the fact that they might have teachers uh, that are not committed to their work uh, and maybe the, the school doesn't operate like it should and yet somehow these students manage to succeed. Maybe they have a passionate teacher, maybe they have a passionate parent or guardian or grandparent that really drives things home. Maybe they're part of a, a program. Uh, I mean just this morning before I came here um, I was speaking to someone about uh, a learner that's just found out now that she got five A's and she's in Tembisa Township uh, in Gauteng. She's part of a, a program called Ecom the Youth that aims to try and uplift these students uh, and give them the opportunities by mentoring each other and helping each other with homework after school. Mm -hmm. So these kind of opportunities are extremely important and we need to celebrate those successes. I mean, that student now wants to go and study medicine at WITS. This is an incredible success story. Absolutely. Uh, and I think Ecom the Youth is an incredible program. Um, but we need, to remain, we need to identify and stress the fact that these are outliers. These are the exception. This is not the rule. Uh, and for the vast majority of students, um, low quality education does become a poverty trap. It is very difficult to escape. If you come from a very low socioeconomic status, your parents have low, uh, low education status themselves, cannot afford to send you to a, a, a fee-paying school. So 80% of our schools are no-fee schools, but those schools are of much, much lower quality and have much lower pass rates on average than the 20% of schools that actually do charge fees. Mm -hmm. And we only have about 10% of those schools that are these X Model C schools that we consider to be quite functional. So yes, to answer your question, it is possible to uh, succeed against the odds, even if you're on the Eastern Cape, but we're talking less than 5% of students that are in these extremely poor backgrounds, mm -hmm. come from these extremely poor backgrounds that manage to make it, for example, to university uh, or study a degree like engineering or medicine.